Hey everyone, it's Bradley. Welcome back to my channel. Portland gentlemen, it is great to have you here today. Research it, mash it, boil it, ferment it, drink it, analyze it, share it. Home brewing is good. Today's video is one that honestly, I have been waiting a long, long time to make. I've had the components now for a while. It's all about the Brew Tools fluid control system. You might see it abbreviated as FCS. And this is something truly special and uh, amazing to be honest. And I'm not just saying it because I'm a super fanboy. Uh, first things first, to get this out of the way. Brew Tools did send me this. My unit is pre-production. Some of my hardware is actually, I believe now, obsolete uh, at the time of recording this, which um, it's, it still works, but it's Brew Tools. These guys don't play and they're moving forward always. So I have this stuff for review. I got everything I needed, plus some extras and plus some stuff I didn't know I needed, which um, wasn't a surprise. Uh, but anyways, so what I'm gonna go into right now, I try and keep it as short as I can, fluid control system. How do you set it up? I wanna answer some questions that I think are relevant to everyone that's gonna be looking at using this and then let you guys know what I think. Cause at this point I have used it to control three fermentations. Again, mine was the first one to leave the workshop in Norway. So I'm truly thankful for everyone watching this. You guys, it's crazy how far I've come. Uh, it means a ton, obviously, and the support of companies like Brew Tools trusting me with their brand new products. The very first thing I did was realize that I needed to mount this in some way special. So what I did was I got a piece of wood. It's, it's just pine, nothing crazy, but I sanded it and I didn't film sanding it because, well, Sand, it was dusty, dusty, dusty. It was, whew, it was out of control. So I didn't film that aspect, but then I threw a little bit of clear sealant on it just to protect it in case I should depressurize a unit tank in here, which uh, if you've watched my videos lately, I, I do that from time to time. So I literally glued it to the wall. I put one screw in it because what the hell. Uh, and then I marked out where I wanted to put the IO module. Now the IO module itself, this thing is basically uh, part of the brains. It's like the second brain of the system. I don't know, something like that. It's part of the brains of the system. And this one is controlling, it has a little bit of logic in it, I believe, but lots of switching off and on and all of the, uh, the canvas communication, just like a car would use. Obviously not a Cybertruck. My Cybertruck uses ethernet, but this is still pretty advanced uh, nonetheless. So I got it up there and um, it, it has holes that are you know countersunk so you can have a flush mount uh, screw that's designed for that. So I used those holes to uh, basically uh, mark on the wall or on my piece of wood where I wanted it. Then I put a few holes in the wood that I just spent all that time sanding, a little nerve wracking, and I screwed it in. I used stainless steel screws. I wish I could have found some that were the, the proper uh, torques to match the Brew Tools hardware, but uh, here in the States, that stuff's hard to come by and I didn't want to wait. I did wind up getting these actually from Lowe's. They had them in stock um, of all places and they're stainless steel. They look the part and that's what matters. Beside that, I also mount the first of what I believe are multiple uh, expansion modules. Mine is the module relay unit that controls the heating element. Now this guy is super cool. It mounts right beside it. The cord for it, you can mount it remote. I've put it up high just because I want to be able to see it. And my setup, in my instance, it works really well here. In your instance, you can put it anywhere. This stuff is very, very, very modular, which is just absolutely amazing. So one of the things to note is this module does, it basically, uh, it gets all of its brains from its buddies next door on the display and it's relays inside of it and it's monitoring power and looking at voltage and fluctuation and this and that as it's heating. So you can use the heating element you've been using for your Brew Tools heater. You can plug this in, but then you need uh, an LP jumper, three pin cable that's sold, obviously, to plug into the relay module and into the heater, and then it takes over. So that's the relay module in a nutshell. Now everything else like alluded is like the LP uh, connectors, and there's three, five, six, and seven. Uh, I think there's two wire one as well, but there's a, there's a lot of them. Now they are sold in the kit. I think the kit right now comes with a three meter length, which is like nine feet, which is, is really long. You know, all the extra cables kind of give me, make me a little nervous. I'm working on cable management. I'm not there yet. I'm a 3D print something pretty cool here in the future. And I'll share that guys with you on the channel. But if you are looking to kind of measure out how you're gonna do this, I have a quick suggestion. If you wanna order stuff all the cart, uh, which is, the kit is nice, you just get it. But I, I like 
a la carte myself, but that's just me. So I'm gonna show you or explain to you a really easy trick uh, if you wanna kind of get an idea of how long of cables you're gonna need. So I don't have a piece of string, but this is a piece of fancy silicone. It's, it's about one meter, I think. And basically what I'm saying we should do here is just take the silicone and tape it to the wall where you think your module is gonna be, and then run the end, other end of your string to where you think the sensor is gonna be. And that'll give you a pretty rapid and rough idea if you can use the one, two or three meter length of cord. I think the cords, you know, it's great for a commercial tank. You might want to monitor remote, but in my brewery, I don't really need too much length on any of the cordage. So currently, as the system is today, there are three solenoids. Uh, the hop dropper will be an amatic solenoid as well, but the three solenoids all have the same plug. Every all the other plugs, they only go into their sensor and their ports on the perspective modules is whatnot. So what I did was I got some very, very fiddly uh, tape, three different colors, and I used the red tape, for instance, to annotate uh, CO2 in if I want to carbonate or do something like that. And I marked the plugs both on the one that goes to the IO module, as well as the jumper on the relay and the in-between plug, like I just said. And then I used white for CO2 out for the spooning valve, if you will. And then I used blue for my glycol uh, solenoid. And this is what opens and closes and allows the system to cool your unit tanks. I honestly think this is a really good suggestion and a good way to go about it. The stuff was cheap. It'll all be linked below. It worked really, really well. And that way, if you mix this stuff up, you, you won't have functionality in the system. They need to be assigned to a certain relay in order to work. And I'll show you right now on the display. Now, the actual, the little blue text, it looks good on, you know, when you're looking at it, but I had a hell of a time filming it. Maybe some of other YouTubers or more talented videographers can get it to film. I was just, it gave me trouble. So please bear with me. But basically what you can go is, you can go in and assign those relays and, and pick which relay you want to go where. So, and it's, it's that simple. Now I will say the relays on the IO module have two numbers. There's like the relay number and then there's the relay position number. To me, it took a, like, I don't know, a few seconds and I realized, okay, relay three, but really it's position one, one, two, or three, or four. And so you need to keep that in mind when you're setting it up. It's not a big deal. I just want to call it out. That way, when you guys get yours out of the box, you can go right through this process and really have a seamless experience. Obviously, these components are available in 34 millimeter. This is an inch and a half tri-clamp temperature sensor. And this thing is just magnificent. Look, the finish there is, is anodized. It's just beautiful. Laser, laser engraved. And um, they're just, they are, just stunning. I, I can't, the feeling I got when I was unboxing these components, it was just, you know, it was just after Christmas and, and this felt like Christmas again. Uh, part of it could have been, this is the first one to leave the workshop in Norway, but there's something special about this. It's, it's totally unique in the space. Uh, what this is gonna do for your home brewery or even your commercial brewery, for a commercial brewery to have this level of control and automation in a system, they will be spending tens and tens of thousands. Whereas these, you know, you'll be able to do it for, for a fraction of the price and really have something that works quite, quite well. So the sensors, as far as cleaning them, and there are numerous ones. Now, the temp sensor, this one will definitely get dirty. Trust me, I've used this one a couple of times, to be honest. Um, I've cleaned it in my CAP. If you wanna see my CAPC process, there's a latest kind of video that I will link. You can check that out and that's gonna work really well for this. Now the sensor here, the back of it, these caps, they are water resistant, but you don't wanna submerge this in water, that's for sure. So you can take one of the wires, the plugs. If I, I have one, hold on, son of a bitch. And, and the cool thing about these is, you know, they only, they only go one way, but there's a really satisfying click when you plug it in. So now it's actually probably at its most watertight and secure. Again, you know, so if you really have to get one of these, clean one of these, maybe a solenoid or something on the CO2 in or out, you can keep it plugged in, which will keep it relatively watertight, don't submerge it, but also just fit, fit the little cap here and just slight pressure, you know, just don't splash water in it, so I'm trying to say. I've never used equipment like this, and I'm sure a lot of you haven't either. We're kind of bouncing around here. All the cables come, you know, nicely packaged. 
My packaging really blew me away. My packaging wasn't final packaging, but again, it's just super nice. It tells you what it is here. I wish they would say in Brew Tools text, and they, they might be doing this like what it's for, for a solenoid or for this display. Just make it a little bit simpler, but once you've figured it out, it's, it's really, really simple. But there's again, so many legs of cable and just so many options. The mini you did before me set up, I'm doing each component separately. I really think that's honestly the coolest way. Um, I just like the way it feels, but a lot of the kits are, are sold where there is a solenoid and this one is pointing up so it's gas out. If it's pointing down, it's gas in. Now you wouldn't want to use it in this way with the pressure sensor on here. Again, this is a bespoke sensor uh, just designed by Brutools for Brutools. And this is one that you definitely want to go up and down. But this one will allow you to put this on virtually any tank. Now you might say that's 34 millimeter. It's uh, more or less a, a proprietary size, which it is and isn't. But you can actually get an adapter to go from 34 to inch and a half. And there you are. Put this on any tank. If you're port limited, this is gonna be the way to go. It's the most compact and modular solution they have to date. If you're gonna use this with a mini uni on the pressure pack, it works perfectly. I only have one of these adapters shown, but this is the M24 adapter to 34 millimeter. Uh, you can use two and I recommend two. Uh, you can get rid of this spooning valve, which is, is a good little valve, but you just don't need it. In my footage here, my testing, cause I just have the one, uh, I'm basically using a T. It's kind of convoluted, it works, but I definitely think also utilizing this port would be far better. Uh, and then obviously a gauge goes on the front. We all know how I feel about that gauge. So another big kind of concern or another one of my questions when I first saw this, and I saw this at the Craft Boot Conference 2024 in Vegas, but it didn't quite sink in is the best way to mount it. So the best way to mount this on the Brew Tools tank, I think is with the, the clamp bracket on your blow off cane. And it, it just, it clamps on there. You just get it around the shaft, but you know, not, you know, you want to respect the shaft, not not too tight, but get it on the shaft. And then the larger 170 millimeter arm, it actually has a, a spring in it. And I just kind of splay it open with my hand, squeeze it and then put the spring on it and then tighten it down. So the friction ball uh, holds it in place. And these work really, really well. If you guys are on any sort of videography or video work, stuff like that, camera stuff is pretty commonly used. And the brute tools components are of an extremely high quality. They have them in, in like a ton of different lengths. So the big one's 170, the, the small ones are, are less. I don't, I don't know the measurement, it's metric, I, I don't know. Uh, but that's the smallest, the medium, and then the biggest is behind me. And then another option, if you don't have per se, the blow off uh, cane, which is an accessory I, I do like, they have this little guy here. And what this one does, is it has inserts inside of it that will allow you to more closely match the diameter of the shaft. This is a little 40 millimeter stubby, really good for the clean core valves, valve to valve, and or for this. And that will also let you mount it on your unitank. Now mine, I took one of the spare friction balls and I actually put a screw on it and mounted it into my unistrut. For me, kind of going up on the wall is ideal for, for cleaning and a lot of reasons. I'm afraid like I'll drop the screen or something. I've done worse around here, although it is robust and the feeling of it is super premium in the hand. The screen is just, it's something to behold. Uh, refresh rate is good. The uh, resolution is quite good. The brightness is, is more than adequate. But again, mine is mounted on the wall. I'm able to move it up and down. Works really well for YouTube and also for me as I'm taller. And again, it fits in my space and I was able to customize that really, really easily. All right, so let's talk about some of the fun stuff. How does it work? Well, first off, my software is super, super early. It's like 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0.2. Um, it's, you know, right now I've, it's, it's working really well in manual mode and uh, the system is able to control heat and temperature and gas in and gas out. And it's actually heating and cooling with greater efficiency in one of my jacketed tanks. I mean, efficiency, I mean, just control than I've ever seen. It is by far, even it's as it is today, the best fermentation controller I've ever used. Now you add in the fact that it can also add gas in and gas out. It's just something to behold. Now, right now, currently when the solenoid opens to let gas out, it does let open the, it does hold the solenoid open, I think a little bit too long. It drops about a full PSI of pressure. I'd love to see it pulse off and on and actuate the solenoid a little bit more. 
It's something Brew Tools can definitely change, and I'm sure they will. The software isn't final, it's just starting to work. Actually, you know, just right when we're filming this, or I'm filming this, I've actually got an update for some more quick recipe profiles and stuff that's just started working, which is super exciting, but that's a whole other video. As far as other functionality, there'll be all sort of data logging, yeast profiles, all the stuff enabled from the cloud. I believe full Brewfather integration is also incoming, but just not quite ready yet. It's the system, there's so much granular control that you're afforded. This is really a pro level piece of equipment here that I think is, is gonna change the industry in a very positive way. Uh, keep in mind the fluid control system, you know, they, they haven't said uh, fermentation because truthfully, you know, this, this could run a whole brew house. Uh, it would need to be able to control, you know, more powerful elements, but I believe we are getting a glimpse at the future right now of brew tools and the direction they plan on going. Cause I don't see why this couldn't with all these sensors and inputs and expansion capability. It's just, it's definitely something it can do. So like I said, all of my fermentations that I've run with it have gone just super smooth. And it's been so awesome to be able to say, Hey, I want to carbonate this. Uh, I want to hold the tank at 13 or 14 PSI. And it just does it as it, as CO2 is dissolved into solution. Uh, once the solenoid, uh, once the pressure sensor, which is the resolution on the sensor is so accurate. The latency is so low on these temp sensors. These are really next level. There's just so much unpacking this one video, guys. It is just gonna blow your mind when you get a hold of this equipment. So like I said, on my 40 liter, this one I have everything on the top. Gas in I have on the back. Then I have the spooning valve with, with the bubbles on the front, which is it's just so cool to see the thing work. And the pressure sensor in the front. You can, of course, put these on any port you want. Uh, we'll talk about the tuning fork in another video and density and level sensing. And the way it's doing that is just, again, this is like pro stuff, like big time pro stuff. And it's coming to a nano breweries, micro breweries and home breweries. And it's just insane. So that's kind of how it goes. Again, the plugs are super straightforward. That was the one thing I was, I wasn't so sure how it would go, but they only go one way. Whenever you plug them in, there's a super positive engagement and a good click. They only go on one way. The power supply just kind of powers the brain just enough. And it just, it's, it's awesome. There isn't much I would change. I kind of wish the display had haptic feedback, but it's not the end of the world that it doesn't. It has a full function speaker, so it is capable of making a wide range of sounds. It actually just started making sounds. Mine did last night. And it's pretty exciting that it'll beeps and it can do things. It sounds really, really good. So it's definitely a premium product. All right, guys, so that's as it's, that's, that's it. As I'm holding this equipment, it is, this is nothing short of just, if, if you're a home brewer or a brewer who, who likes shiny toys, what's on offer here in the fluid control system is quite revolutionary. I think it's a bigger deal than the brewing system, which again is now five years old and the control system there no one else is that good in the space. So this is just the next level and the next evolution of what's going on. The, the team has worked obviously very hard on it. The way all these components just feel and look and work together, it's just super robust and just, uh, I can't say enough good about it. There aren't honestly any negatives. The only negative is right now it's in beta. So, and they're very honest about that, it's in beta. So you know, going on over time, it's going to get better and better as the team refines the software and the way it works. This one for me, and granted, I do, uh, I'm a, a Brew Tools fanboy. Uh, at the time of recording this, I am employed by More Flavor. These equip, the stuff, it's a glowing hands down recommendation. Uh, I don't like to make a video like that because some people will go one way or another. I don't care. This stuff, is next level. You've got to get it. You've got to try it. Uh, I wish everyone could come to my, my home brewery here and see it. I'd love to show you what it's about. Uh, look for more content from me as well as other creators online. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember, I've been Bradley. Home brewing is good, and I'll see you real, real soon.